Greetings. My name is Mark Farina. We are here in Denver at Twist and Shout Records. Do some digging for Vinyl Me Please. And look for me in your town. Hopefully I'll be there soon. My music is like authentic. There's so many to choose from. I decided to go with one of my favorite all-time classics, uh, Soul Mining, the the. Um, I got it on CD as well, of course, for the car. Um, just, I don't know, one of my favorite albums of all time, and it kind of keeps you mellow and chill driving around so you don't get offensive. And just, I mean, song after song, the whole thing is great. I mean, every song, this was sort of a pivotal time in my musical upbringing. So, I mean, Obviously, you know, Uncertain Smile is a classic. Um, I'm not sure. Let me see if on the album I forget. I have so many 12 inches if it's the long version. Well, 654. But on the 12 inch, though, which I put on a little compilation thing for driving, it's, there's like a 10 minute mix that, in, with Jules Holland. And so, I mean, every song on this album is awesome. Matt Johnson is a great song, songwriter. But yeah, I mean, I've listened to this album front to back almost in all environments. Of course, home, the car, but. It's just a nice chill drive around thing and the lyrics, the songwriting, amazing. Favorite album to dance to? That's a tough one since I've been a dance music DJ for 35 years now. So I decided to go back to a period in Chicago in the 80s and house music was going on in Chicago and there was a label called Wax Tracks in Chicago that had groups like Ministry from 242 and we used to go to this record store every week. So there was sort of a big mixed dance music scene in Chicago in this early 80s, mid 80s, 85 period where similar to house music, the DJs would blend all the industrial 80s music. Like you couldn't just play songs, it all had to be beat matched, like from you know, Severed Heads, Yellow, um, new Order, but everything was all beat matched. And there was a song that sort of bridged from 80s into where dance music turned into in that late 80s into 90s period. And this is kind of a hidden Chicago classic, this Liaison Dangereuse album. I want to say it's 80, 81. A lot of house and techno stem from this particular song called Pa uh, and the other song on this that was really popular in the club was Los Niños del Parque. And just those two songs, even to this day, if someone plays either of those two songs and I'm in a club, I'm going to dance no matter what. You know, I'm going to dance you know, at home if I hear it, but there's a group of us old Chicago and you know, Detroit people that know this particular song. It's been sampled a bunch. Uh, you can even search on YouTube and there's like a them doing it live in the 80s and they're obscure. They're like since they were like Eastern European, and the, but the label came out in France. They're both chicago -y classics and some other, you know, Midwest kind of industrial classics. But Petetra Pine just sort of, like I said, it bridged this whole future of house that was yet to come that somehow they tapped into in 1981. Amazing track. Before Shazam, you know, you had to do your homework to, to figure out what songs were, you know. And a lot of times in that 80s period, the DJ booth was kind of unaccessible. Like, DJs back then didn't want you to come talk to them, so it took some homework to find this track, so you'd basically have to record it on cassette and then bring it to a record store and you'd play the cassette in the record store. Or you'd call a record store and play it over the phone. You'd put the little speaker, like the headphone to the phone. Do you know this song? So it took me a while to figure out this song because, like I said, it's in French. It's not your normal, like, chorus verse type of song where you can be like, oh, it's got the, this chorus. So it took a while to find. And even to this day, if I see this record anywhere, I buy it. I have four of them. So whenever I see it, I buy it because you don't see it much.
favorite album to wake up to. You know, the morning's a, a tender time. Uh, I like to put on something chill. Um, where I'm at now, um, my kitchen and DJ room are kind of connected, so I can go turn on the espresso machine and put on a record, and still one that's great in the early morning would be Police, Ghost in the Machine. I was a big Police fan since late 80s period, early 80s. Um, and I was into drummers, so Stuart Cop Copeland was one of my favorite drummers of all time. So, and one of my early, my early concert experience was a police that I saw them in, I want to say it was around 83, 84, at the old Comiskey Park in Chicago, which is torn down and they built a new one. And it was, uh, I was in eighth grade, so I'm trying to think of the year, but it was around 83. And it was the police with Ministry, Flock of Seagulls, The Fix, and Joan Jett. And, you know, it always stuck, and just seeing the police back then was amazing. So, I mean, start to finish, you know, just Spirits and the Material were the opening song. You can't beat that. The whole album is just wonderful. Um, I mean, I love the B-side, you know, with One World, Not Three, um, Omega Man, and Secret Journey. Just one of those you can listen to the whole album, start to finish. Never, a, not even a bad song on it. And it kind of gets you going in the day. It's got some, it's chill, but it's got some aggression in it too. And it puts you in a good mood to start your day off right. Police, go to the machine. <laughs> An album that reminds me of my childhood and that was pivotal in my early musical career would be like the first concert I ever went to in 1981 was the Moving Pictures Tour. So this album, I remember getting it brand new. They had a, I grew up in Park Ridge, Illinois, and there was a little record store called Rainbow Records in, you know, in our little downtown that we used to go hang out at, and I remember buying it brand new when it came out. Um, even at the uh, concert, I got like a moving pictures tour book, which was album size. Same, looked the same, but you know, it opened up, it had a whole book in it, and I mean, Rush was just one of my early bands that I got really into. Neil Peart was amazing, and this whole album, start to finish, among other albums, and I can still remember seeing all these live, you know, like Tom, every song is amazing. So Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta, YYZ, Limelight, Camera Eye, Witch Hunt, Vital Signs. I mean, it's one of those, there's a B-side, but there almost is no B-side to this record because they're both A-sides, and we just, I mean, I used to draw all these, I used to try and draw this cover. This cover just gives me sight memories because I used to look at it so much and uh yeah I mean seeing them and I still have that concert shirt to this day actually in my drawer my first concert shirt that I ever bought so it was great to see I ended up seeing Rush several times after that I guess if I could go back in time I'd definitely go back and see the show again <laughs> favorite album to get a crowd moving um so like I mentioned, being a dance music DJ for so long, I mean, there's so many angles you can go, like hip hop, you know, and so many other genres of house, whatever. I always find wherever I'm at to get a crowd moving, sometimes you gotta go back and go in history and pull out something old, it never fails to, to get people going. And of course, a, a good standby, you know, you can't go wrong with James Brown. Um, you know, this album I've had for quite a long time. There's so many great songs on this track, like, Lynn Collins, but uh, JB's Monorail was a good old one. Uh, Pass the Peas, give me some more. I mean, there's some other obscure James Brown tracks, but just uh, something about hearing James Brown in a club, not on a home system, it really pops. And especially, like, say, if there's been dance music going on all night, you know, like electronic y music, when this comes on through a sound system, it's unrecognizable and you're like, I don't know, still to this day, you know, this man knew how to make good dance music, you know, and the way that sounds pop, the snares, the bass, you know, and his voice, and uh, people can always, all people from anywhere can relate to James Brown. So, we will be choosing one lucky listener to win all the picks that we have spoken about today, and also a bonus, uh, one of my old compilations, Mushroom Jazz 4 on vinyl, which is very hard to find. You can search in many vinyl sections, you won't see it. I still have a couple in my secret stash, so Mushroom Jazz 4, double vinyl. Enjoy, and have happy listening. Yeah.
history of my life.